Hi, it's Andrea, and this is the third video of our series, Reiki 101, that I'm making here on the Mainstream Reiki YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me and having an interest in demystifying Reiki. All right, let's dive in. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit more about Ki. And Ki, if you recall from one of my past videos, is life force energy. And that life force energy is inherent or a part of all living things. That's our vitality. And it needs to flow in and around the living thing the way it's designed to. Uh, free to flow uh, without stagnation or blockages. And when that happens, we feel good. We have a sense of well-being physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. All right, so that's a quick recap about what key is. Now, there is a characteristic of key that I felt was so important. I wanted to start this video with it. And that is key is influenced by the mind. Now your mind is with you 24 seven. And that's why I think this is so important. You've probably heard of the mind body connection. Well, here we go. The mind body connection and key. It's all the same thing that we're talking about. So what does this mean? If you have a positive outlook, if you're optimistic, and perhaps most importantly, if your inner dialogue, how you talk to yourself is loving and supportive, it impacts your key by making it flow more powerful, more powerfully and better, better balance, more vitality. You feel better. This supports you in staying in balance and staying healthy because that energy is flowing the way it's designed to. Now, let's look on the other hand. If you are negative, fearful about life, if you're down on yourself and you aren't very kind, uh, perhaps critical of yourself in your thinking and how you talk to yourself, in that case, you're going to impact your life force energy or your key as well. But in this case, what's going to happen is you're going to diminish your flow of key or life force energy. You're not going to be as in balance. You're not going to feel as vital or alive. And over time, if you keep up those patterned uh, ways of thinking and talking to yourself, you can actually be more susceptible to illness. It's true. So that mind-body connection that you've heard a lot about, add this concept of key to the mix and you'll understand how important it is to be aware of your thinking and that inner dialogue that you have every single day. It's so important. And as a side note, this might help you understand a little bit more about why in some of my videos, I offer supportive messages to you when I talk to you, or perhaps offer you affirmations to say for yourself. So Reiki is a wonderful healing tool that helps us on all levels. It's holistic and it never causes harm. But why not be more mindful of our thinking and our thoughts and add that to the process? You know, it just makes it better and better. All right, let's shift gears and we'll talk about the second topic of the video, which is comparing and contrasting energy healing modalities with Reiki. I'm going to highlight three key differences, and then I'm going to preview what we're going to talk about in the next video. The first difference we're going to cover is the practitioner's role. In Reiki, you really don't have to know any particular set of knowledge or skills in order to successfully practice Reiki, share it with others, and reap the benefits of it. You don't have to know all about anatomy of the body or even chakras or the energy system of the body. You don't have to have uh, special uh, skills about how to find root causes or how to muscle test or any other techniques that you might find in other healing modalities. The most effective Reiki sessions actually happen when the practitioner steps aside and doesn't get involved in the healing process. Now, that might sound counterintuitive, but if you recall in my first video of the series, I explained that Reiki at its core is universally guided life force energy. The wisdom that is part of the energy knows how to best help you if you're offering it to yourself or the other person if you're sharing Reiki with someone else. So the results 
are really not based on any knowledge or um, technique or skill of the Reiki practitioner. The practitioner's role is to simply make an opportunity for that pure spiritually guided life force energy to meet with the person. And the wisdom is there already. So a Reiki practitioner does the best for whoever it is they're helping with Reiki to remove themselves from the equation and trust the Reiki energy to know how to best help them. To illustrate this a little bit more for you, once I had a student in Reiki class, I think it was the master class, and she asked me, well, Andrea, um, how do you know when the chakras open that you're working on so that you can move to the next chakra where there's a block? And, you know, that question sort of caught me off guard. And I said, well, um, I don't really care if their chakras open and I'm not really um, trying to determine what's open, what's closed or anything like that. Because if I were to do that, then I'm inserting myself in the process. Instead, I simply offer Reiki and I'm an intuitive practitioner and can sense where the energy is needed. And I follow that. But even practitioners that aren't intuitively guided yet, you know, it took me a long time of practice before I got to that, to be able to do that. So in the beginning, like many people, I couldn't sense the energy at all. I just relied on the different hand placements that were taught in Reiki class, and it worked just fine. The main idea here is that people and their energy, they're very complex. And who am I as a practitioner to determine what chakras need to be open and what order and how much? And, you know, that that's just one example of something that the energy might help them with. I am much more comfortable stepping aside and trusting the Reiki. It knows how to help them. I am just making it available. And the wisdom of Reiki and the wisdom of that person's body, mind, and spirit they get together and they work it out. And as a practitioner, I love that because it's then that I can trust Reiki does no harm because all I'm offering is that energy. I'm not getting in the way. I'm not making decisions about what is best for that person. In my studies of other energy healing modalities, it isn't like that at all. I had to learn certain things. Um, I had to diagnose certain things in a session. And I don't mean diagnose like a doctor would diagnose, but just in my other example, you see how that student was in the practice of diagnosing chakras, what's open, what's not. And then she would work to, or at least she was implying by her question that she would work to open the chakras for that person. Again, that's out of my realm of what I want to be responsible for. I think people's energy that flows in and around their bodies is the most precious thing that a person has. And I want to be extremely careful about uh, working with that. And that's why even after I've learned all these modalities, I concentrate on Reiki. I have confidence and I trust the Reiki. I know it's not going to do any harm. And one of the other things I want to mention in contrast, Reiki and these healing modalities, is the fact that in Reiki, the practitioner is never depleted, never drained in a session. And I know in other healing modalities, that isn't always the case. And so the practitioner in that regard might feel drained or tired after offering a session. With Reiki, it's very different because the practitioner is not utilizing their own energy at all. Remember, they're removed from the process. They're trusting the Reiki energy. And not only that, they're actually receiving Reiki as they're offering it. So they'll feel energized and even better after sharing Reiki with another person. You might have heard about Reiki people saying that they feel drained or depleted after session. And what I would say about that is there's something else going on in addition to offering Reiki. Maybe we'll talk about that in a later video, but just want to make that clear. When you're only offering Reiki, the practitioner will feel great after the session. I just want to make one more point about this, and that is 
Remember in the last video, I talked about Usui and the fact that when he received Reiki, it was just the energy and it worked beautifully in healing, not only himself immediately after that, but when he would share it with others. Now, in those early days, he didn't have certain techniques. He didn't have anything to go along with the energy. There were no symbols. It's further evidence that Reiki works without all the techniques, all the knowledge. And you know what? He didn't teach chakras and opening chakras and all of that. He didn't teach that. So if we go back to the very beginning of Reiki, we see it's the energy, the energy, the energy. As Reiki practitioners, let's just offer the energy and get out of the way. It's a joy and a gift and a blessing to work in that way. And we can always know that whoever we're sharing Reiki with will be helped in accordance with whatever's in their highest good. And we don't have to get involved or know what that is. So before we wrap up, I just want to remind you about your key and that mind-body connection with your key. Monitor your thoughts and choose wisely. And Reiki is a subset of energy healing, but it is very different. The role of the practitioner is different. The way we can just trust the energy and not rely on our own knowledge or skills is a huge bonus. And we never feel depleted. There's no sacrifice when someone offers Reiki to another person. In the next video, I'm going to talk to you about attunements because that is the real difference when we get to training, learning Reiki versus learning other healing modalities. It's that attunement that gets a lot of attention and a lot of people have questions about the attunements, what they are, how they work, and if they're even necessary in this day and age. We're going to talk about that and more in the next video. And so thanks for watching. And if you're not subscribed, why not subscribe, get notifications and find out when the next Reiki 101 video is coming out. I'll see you next Friday. And until then, take wonderful care. Thanks for being a part of the Mainstream Reiki YouTube channel.